according to Carl. No, not Carl as in Malden the actor. And no, not Karl Marx. Let me try this again. According to Walter. No, not Walter, as in Mondale. I am talking Walter, as in Karl Walter, a German gunsmith who in 1886 founded a firearms company that we now know simply as Walter, and which Walter Arms Incorporated, which is the United States Walter Business Unit, and is based in Fort Smith, Arkansas, produces some of the finest quality and world-renowned firearms ever known. In a way, according to Walther, It's your duty to be ready. I don't know about you, but if I had a personal defense pistol like the Walther PDP Compact 4-inch barrel pistol with a Holosun 507C optic mounted, I think I would be ready for most anything. Self-defense? competition, or defending the castle. Oh, wait! <laughs> I have one in my hand. So let's get into what this pistol is all about. You are about to view a stem-to-stern port-to-starboard review of the Walther PDP compact 4-inch pistol to include specifications, features, maintenance, range time, carry and concealment options. I'll also cover the top features of the mounted Holosun 507C optic that I really like. There are a lot of features of the Walther PDP Compact to like, and my son-in-law, who loaned me this pistol for review, may not ever see it again. Just kidding. Well, maybe not. I know that I have to give it back. I am sorely tempted, however, to acquire this pistol for myself, and I have to tell you why. So, I'll start with the basics, and I'll work my way from there. The term functional art normally refers to architecture. However, the term functional art can also be applied to other things as well, like firearms. The notion of functional art, as related to firearms, simply means that no firearm is beautiful unless it properly fulfills its function. If a firearm fulfills its function, it is ipso facto beautiful, and since form relates to function, a firearm is a species of functional art. Since form and function is in the eyes of the beholder, I'll be holding on to the Walter PDP Compact long enough to give it a thorough going over and pass on what I observed to you. Let me get started with the overall look and feel and then get into some specific attributes of this pistol. The Walther PDP Compact is just a piece that you want to hold in your hand and never let it go. It's that pleasing to hold, even considering that it is rather on the chunky side. The fit in the hand is like it belongs there. 
The styling is modernistic, and the basic overall look of the pistol says that it means business and not just glam. The front of the slide is double beveled to eliminate snagging when inserted into a holster, and is very distinct when looking at the front profile. Unlike a Glock front profile that is pretty much squared off, the Walter PDP is tapered upward into a flat top. A front single dot sight is fastened with a screw and not adjustable for windage or elevation. Front slide serrations, or super terrain serrations as Walter calls them, are cut wide and deep and present no issue when gripping them for press checking or racking the slide. Walter puts it this way. The super terrain serrations are uniquely designed protruding serrations on the slide, allowing for quicker and more responsive hands on engagement with the pistol. Instead of the standard subterranean cuts that are cut into the surface of the slide, Walther has broken the mold with a super terrain design to raise the serrations above the surface of the slide, offering a new more positive feel to operating the action. When you go to make ready, you will feel the difference the instant you put your hands on it. The ejection port, as is the front slide serrations, is cut wide and deep to guarantee that expended cases are thrown well away from the pistol. The Walther logo is very nicely laser etched into the left side of the slide, while the right side of the slide contains a plethora of models and other manufacturing information. Whilst the chamber contains the Walther logo, caliber, and other information that, I feel, is overkill, but, and apparently, Walther felt it necessary to include. I might note here that there is no inspection hole or other means to determine if a cartridge is chambered, as with some pistols. The pistol can be press checked using the front or rear slide serrations and pulling the slide back slightly. Just to the rear of the chamber is the external extractor that is well blended into the slide. My thanks to Walther for providing a very positive operating extractor to rid the pistol of those pesky fired shell casings. Moving to the rear, a Holosun 507C open reflex optical sight that incorporates a green 2 MOA dot and a 32 MOA circle display is mounted on this particular pistol. I'll cover the specifics of the sight a bit later in the presentation. The Walther PDP Compact comes with a single adapter plate that, in this case, was used to mount the Holosun optic. A cover plate was also included that replaces the Holosun unit if an optic is not desired. The same super terrain serrations are found at the rear of the slide, and like the front serrations, provide an adequate gripping surface. Just to the rear of the optic is the fully adjustable for windage and elevation two dot rear sight. If an optic is not mounted, the flat front of the rear sight can serve as a cocking point, if needed. However, with a mounted optic, the rear sight sits flush with the optic. If the optic is properly zeroed, the rear sight can work as a lower third co-witness. Even without an optic mounted, the three-dot sight arrangement is large enough even for my aging eyes to work with. I have to admit, however, that the optic's display is kinder to work with, even with the astigmatism in my dominant left eye. It forces me to close my dominant eye to gain a clear view of the display. More on that later. Internal to the slide is, of course, components like the striker spring, striker guide, striker return spring, striker assembly, and, who would have thunk it, a recoil spring, guide rod, and barrel. Setting others aside, the recoil spring and guide rod are captivated and include a flat wound recoil spring and polymer guide rod. The guide rod incorporates a collar that, when removed, allows the separation of the guide rod and recoil spring for maintenance. The barrel is of the 4 inch kind with the John Moses Browning tilt barrel locking. The tilt barrel locking surface on the barrel, when it is straight, prevents the breech block from separating from the slide and moving to the rear. Under recoil, the chamber end of the barrel tilts down during operation, 
to allow the barrel and slide to separate. Nothing new to see here. It's now time to get started on the frame. The frame is, of course, polymer. That is formed and fitted in all the right places for controlling gripping. An accessory rail, now seemingly standard on many pistols, is evident at the front of the frame. The accessory rail seems to be 1913 Picatinny compliant, and three mounting points for laser, flashlight, or combination of both are available. The trigger guard is squared off and checkered for those who like to place in a finger on it, and is nicely undercut at the rear so that the hand can get as high a purchase on the grip as possible. The interior of the trigger guard is large enough to accommodate a gloved hand. The trigger is of the PDT type. I know that because it is labeled as such. PDT stands for Performance Duty Trigger, and which follows through with the PDP Performance Duty Pistol designation of the pistol. The trigger face is serrated, rounded, and curved, and which incorporates the now accepted trigger safety lever within the trigger housing, and which prevents the trigger from moving into the frame if not pressed in fully. The trigger pull is unique. At the beginning of the trigger pull, there is a bit of tension slack until it reaches a point where stacking is felt, which is an increased change in trigger pull tension. This continues until the proverbial wall is felt. This portion of the trigger pull does not feel sabulous, sandy, or gritty. The trigger pull weight came in at 2 pounds, 15.4 ounces, with a 5 pole average. When the brake does occur, it is clean and quick with no perceived over travel. Trigger reset is positive and quick. Overall, the trigger is excellent. Just above the trigger guard is an ambidextrous slide lock lever that is well serrated to provide a positive gripping surface to pull down when field stripping the pistol. Just to the rear of the takedown lever is the slide lock lever, which is available on both sides of the pistol. The lever is long and, for my hand, is easily reachable with the thumb or, if need be, the forefinger of the shooting hand. I might as well mention here that the slide is heavy to operate and takes some hand strength to do so. A substantial recoil spring is the culprit behind that. In all honesty, I found that using the optic as an aid in racking the slide from a closed position made that job easier for me. The slide lock lever is easy to operate when locking the slide to the rear due to its long serrated surface. It does take some thumb strength to press it down and release the slide from a full locked position. I found that using the thumb of the support hand worked well to press the lever down and release the slide into battery. I like to use the slingshot method and as mentioned, use the optic and rear slide serrations to get as full a grip as possible. To release the slide, unless I feel that I must use the slide lock for a quick reload. Let me get to the grip frame, or shall I say, I'll let Walther provide a brief description of the grip first. Developed by Walther to provide a premium, yet functional grip, the performance duty texture provides an aggressive surface to maintain proper grip performance. With its tetrahedron design, it is non-abrasive so there will be no irritation to the skin or clothing of the user. Walther has pushed the boundaries of testing in some of the harshest conditions to ensure this pattern is ready when you are. Whether it's torrential rainfall, extreme heat and humidity, icy cold temperatures, or thick mud, the performance duty texture of the PDP will help you be ready when it's imperative you have the perfect grip. The reality is that the grip texture is pretty darn good. The texture, while feeling somewhat aggressive, is really not that aggressive yet once gripped is not obtrusive to the hand and provides an excellent gripping surface at the front side and rear of the handle. The grip angle feels natural in the hand while the arched adapter can be swapped with one that better suits the hand. The PDP Compact comes with two additional grip adapters, one thinner than what was installed and one thicker with a small beaver tail, but I did not bother with them 
as the installed grip adapter felt very good in the hand and the arch was against the palm of my hand right where I like it. A single roll pin makes flopping out the grip adapter easy when using a 5 32nd inch pin punch, which is not provided. At the top of the grip area is a nice beaver tail that keeps the hand close to the slide but not close enough to cause slide bite. The beaver tail fits nicely into the fleshy web of my hand while covering it completely. I really like this beaver tail, but maybe not as much as beavers like theirs. The length of the grip frame is comparable to a Glock G19 grip length. The bottom of the grip frame is flared at the front to provide a nice place to rest the pinky finger. I like this feature, as it would provide a guide for my fingers to hook when pulling the pistol from a holster, and I like a positive gripping surface when doing so. The bottom of the grip is extended at the rear, and which blends in nicely with the magazine base. The grip, while not incorporating finger grooves, does have mild swells on the sides that seem to act as a guide of sorts for the fingers to rest. At first, I did not realize that they were even present, but as I moved my fingers around the grip, they became mildly evident. Alright, two more things left on the talking points magazines, and a magazine catch and release apparatus. Two steel staggered 15 round magazines are included with the PDP Compact. Both magazines have witness holes for round counting and wide and flared flat polymer base plates. The magazine followers are red polymer and incorporate an anti-dive feature. The magazines are clearly stamped, made in Italy, and also CAL 9MM for those who aren't sure what to stoke into the PDP Compact. Each magazine can be disassembled for maintenance. The magazine catch and release button, as I call it, is conveniently located on the left side of the frame. It can be mounted for left-handed users on the right side. The button is prominent, meaning large, but well integrated into the frame sculpturing and should not present an issue with being accidentally pushed in when firing the pistol. Well, that covers quite a bit of the outside. Let's look at the inside. But wait, that means that I must disassemble the pistol to do so. So, let me show you how I am going to do that. Making sure that I point the pistol in a safe direction and that my finger is off of the trigger and out of the trigger guard, I press the magazine catch and release button to release the magazine and remove it from the firearm. With the muzzle pointing it in a safe direction and with the finger off of the trigger and outside of the trigger guard, I'll grab the serrated sides of the slide and briskly draw the slide fully rearward in order to extract any cartridge from the barrel chamber and clear it from the pistol all the while locking the slide into place with the slide stop. Once verified that the pistol is safe to continue, I grab the slide and pull it to the rear, which releases the slide lock, and then continue to slowly allow the slide to go forward into battery. If your version of the PDP has a threaded barrel protector, or if a muzzle device is installed, it needs to be removed before the barrel can be removed. In all honesty, I should not even have to mention this, as it should be evident. However, it may not be evident to the first time user of the pistol. While pointing the pistol in a safe direction, I need to squeeze the trigger fully to the rear. Next is to pull the slide slightly to the rear to take pressure off of the takedown assembly. Then, grip the takedown catch on both sides and pull downwards. While holding the takedown catch down, I move the slide forward and remove it from the frame. Turning the slide upside down, I get to remove the recoil spring assembly from below the barrel while compressing the spring, which does not take a lot of effort. The flat, wound recoil spring and pile of our guide rod are captivated and will not fly apart. 
Next comes removing the barrel from the slide. While I could take you further, there is no need to, as this is as far as I need to go for general cleaning, inspection, and lubrication. If you do want to go further than I am willing to take you, for example, removing and installing the striker assembly, extractor, or servicing the magazines, please refer to the operation and instruction manual, as it is, for the most part, well detailed regarding these maintenance actions. If you take a look at the inside of the slide, it is virtually free of machining marks, which is quite evident that Walter knows what they are doing. The inside of the polymer frame components seemingly looks like any other polymer pistol on the market. The main feature of the PDP, which is becoming more and more prominent with pistols of this nature, is the modularity of the pistol. The PDP is the most popular and versatile pistol ever designed by Walther. Any slide length can fit on any frame, even if it is not offered by the factory. Want a long slide with a short dust cover? That's possible. Or, how about a shorter slide than the dust cover? That is entirely possible as well. To get back on point, you can tell that the slide and frame are impeccably done. And when all components are melded together, contribute to the consanity of the PDP. How's that for waxing poetic? As far as lubricating the PDP, since I don't want to be accused of being officious, here is a lubrication diagram and recommended lubricants to use on each of the lubrication points. Of course, you can refer to the safety and operation manual, which contains the same information. Now, Let's put this puppy back together. Install the barrel into the slide and ensure that it is locked into place. Install the captivated recoil assembly, ensuring that it is properly seated against the barrel. Don't bother with the end cap if your version has a threaded barrel for now. Let's get through the major assembling of the pistol first. Assemble the slide and frame by placing the slide onto the frame until you hear a click, which tells you that the slide is locked to the frame. Then, cycle the slide several times to check for proper slide operation. Next comes the function check, which is very brief. As is mentioned in all of my reviews, I use snap caps for checking certain functions like chambering, extraction, ejection, and locking back of the slide on the empty magazine. Plus, the snap caps protect the striker. All that is needed is to load two snap caps into the magazine, insert the magazine into the grip, and then cycle the slide one time to chamber the first snap cap. The pistol is now in a cocked condition. Attempt to pull the trigger without pressing the trigger safety lever. The trigger should not move inward past the frame. Pull the trigger while pressing the trigger safety lever fully in. The striker will release. To check trigger reset, pull and hold the trigger while completely cycling the slide. Do not release the trigger. The first snap cap should be extracted and ejected. Slowly release the trigger and you will feel the trigger reset point. It should be distinct. Completely release the trigger. Without pulling the trigger, pull or push the slide fully to the rear. The second and last snap cap should be extracted and ejected. And the slide should lock back on an empty magazine. You can now attach a muzzle device or simply install the muzzle end cap if you have a threaded barrel or not concern yourself with any of this, if the barrel is not threaded. Well, I think that it is that time where the Walter PDP Compact needs some range time. So, let's get out of here and go do that.
I have been looking forward to this rain session with the Walther PDP Compact 4-inch ever since it came into my hands. I have really been interested in checking out the electronic optics, and this has the Holosun HE507C with green display mounted. I get to indulge my curiosity. Today's fodder is Magtech 115 grain FNJ and Remington 124 grain FNJ and, for defensive ammunition testing, my favorite Sig Sauer 147 grain jacketed hollow point. The optic had already been zeroed for other eyes and I had no idea if it was going to work for my eyes, knowing full well that I might have to make adjustments, not to the sight, but exercising my knowledge of Kentucky sighting. What was going to be interesting is that with the astigmatism in my dominant left eye causing a ghosting of the display, what impact that was going to have on hitting what I am aiming at. I have been trained to keep both eyes open when sighting a handgun, and I wanted to keep doing that. I was not sure if I was going to need closing my left eye and sighting only with my right astigmatism-free eye. Working with this optic was going to allow me to decide if I should need one, or not need one, for defensive purposes, or if I am better off with standard sights when the fertilizer impacts the ventilator. As I move along with today's At The Range session, I'll make notes for you to read.
Since this loaner, Walter PDP, is equipped with the Holosun HE507C optic, let me touch on that a bit. Before I get into it, and this is my personal opinion, I don't need an optic for defensive shooting. In the majority of cases where a defensive shooting must happen, it is going to be up close and pretty personal. It will be a point-and-shoot operation with no time to align sights, let alone locate a pattern or dot enclosed in an electronic sight. A laser, in my personal opinion, is quicker to use, but I may not have the luxury of time needed to even activate a rail-mounted laser. A grip-mounted pressure-activated laser, to me, would be more beneficial in acquiring a target. But since this PDP has an optic installed, let me tell you about it. The Holosun 507C, where the C stands for competition, is a pistol optic featuring a large 1.1 inch by 0.87 inch objective lens for enhanced shooting performance and Holosun's competition reticle system, or CRS. This unit has a green LED. A red LED version is also available. CRS is an enhanced multi-reticle system with four components, a precision 2 MOA dot, an 8 MOA circle, a 20 MOA circle, and a 32 MOA circle with multiple combination settings to suit an individual's preference. The 507 Comp offers up to 50,000 hours of battery life with six day and two night vision compatible reticle brightness settings. Shake Awake technology helps to preserve the battery performance and returns the user to the last chosen setting. The 1.1 inch by 0.87 inch window significantly increases the sight picture and is parallax free with unlimited eye relief. The 507C optic is manufactured from a single piece of 7075 T6 aluminum and which provides superior protection from bumps, dings, and drops. Adjustment is simple and has one MOA per click adjustments. Both windage and elevation are adjustable up to plus and minus 30 MOA. The unique reticle system and large window makes it easy for even these old eyes to acquire a target. I have included a link in the description, should this optic interest you. Alright, let's move on to carrying and concealing the Walter PDP Compact. The Walther PDP Compact with its 4-inch barrel would be an excellent carry piece, concealed or not. It is a bit on the chunky side, and that alone might dictate if the pistol is to be concealed. Currently, I do not have a holster for this pistol, since it is on loan, but if one should fall permanently into my hands, an IWB holster would be in order. In a brief search for holsters for the PDP series of pistols, came across a host of holsters on the Jungle website that would suit my need for IWB strong side, cross draw, or shoulder carry. Most holsters found there are optic cut, and I leave this up to you to research and then decide what holster will fit your carry needs. This Walther PDP Compact 4-inch is a fine piece of work in both form and function. Packaged in a lockable polymer case with two grip adapters, spare 15-round magazine and loading tool, support documentation for both the pistol and optic, a top plate for replacing the optic if one chooses to do so, and a multi-tool for adjusting elevation and windage, and for attaching and detaching T10 Torx screws get you going right out of the gate. The only thing you might need is a fine, flat tip jeweler screwdriver for adjusting elevation and windage on the rear mechanical sight, should you decide not to run an optic. Walther built the PDP Compact for carry. All PDP models come red dot ready 
for those shooters looking to make the switch to a red dot sight system. However, if you don't want to run a red dot, the PDP comes with a cover plate to maintain that factory look and feel. If you don't want to make that jump to a red dot system just yet, the standard iron sights that come installed on the PDP offer windage and elevation adjustments right out of the box. The trigger, although basic looking with its serrated, rounded, and internal safety lever, feels great. The frame ergonomics are just right for my hands. The grip fills my entire hand very well, and the texturing provides a positive grip with a grip angle that points as naturally as a wide body 1911. With a slide width of 1.34 inches, the same as that of the Glock G19 Gen 5, but with more styling and lack of looking, well, blockish. Plus that the Walther PDP Compact 4 inch weighs only 0.59 ounces more than the G19, makes this a viable contender for carrying, concealed or not. To say the least, I am impressed with the Walther PDP Compact 4 inch. And, although I don't need one, I want one, just like this one. When you think about it, taking 151 plus individual parts and making a highly functional pistol that is additive is no easy task, but Walter is doing it well. Do you know what time it is? It's time to put another chapter of the Range Ronin Chronicles to bed. I hope that you found this review informative, informative enough to research the Walter PDP line and see if one is right for you, as there are, at the time of this review, six models to choose from. So, until we meet again, stay safe out there.